You've collected data from your users and you've stored it. Now you've got this bank of data ready to use. But a big piece of the puzzle is missing, which is transforming and displaying the data in a way that makes your application unique. Many of the web applications we make are data transformers and displayers. I mean, just take a look at social media networks, for example. They just take user data and display it to other users, along with many transformations. Things like to-do apps, email, knowledge bases, chats like Discord and Slack, and the list goes on and all they do is more or less the same stuff. By learning about these two pillars, taking in data and displaying data, you'll have a super strong foundation for building web applications. Let's get to it. I'll start off with the code from the last video. So we've got here app.py that contains our Flask code, just a single endpoint that returns the render template of the form to display the form and also accepts the form data. At the moment, it doesn't do anything with it. We've got the HTML file that is the actual form and a style.css to make it look a bit nicer. Now, if we want to be able to accept the user's data and then display it somewhere else, we need a way to store the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a transactions list in here. And every time that the user sends us a form full of data, we're going to take that and add it to our list. So what I'm going to do is do transactions.append. And then in here, we're going to add a tuple, a tuple containing three elements, one for each form field, so that each tuple represents a record in a database sort of thing. So we'll do request.form.get date. Then we'll do a float of request.form.get amount. And finally, we'll do request.form.get account. And that is going to give us the three fields of data and it's going to put them in a tuple and it's going to append them to this list so that later on we can refer to it. Remember though that since transactions is just a Python list, every time we stop and then restart the app, we're going to lose all the data in that list. If you wanted to keep the data around in between runs or restarts of your app, you would have to store that in a file or a database. We might look into that in a later video of this series as well. We're now going to work on displaying the transactions that a user has submitted. So for that, we're going to need to create a new HTML page and in it, put all the data that our transactions comprise of. But we don't want to have to submit the form over and over again every time we restart our app. So we're going to add some test data into this list so that we can work with that test data while we're working on this new page. Later on, when we share this with users, we would get rid of that test data. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple of tuples in here so that we can test our applications with that. Something important to note when you're adding test data is to make sure that it matches the format of your actual data exactly. So whereas here you can see the date is showing up as day, month, year. This is because HTML is smart enough to know I'm in the UK and this is the normal way for me to enter dates. But when it submits, it always submits as year, month, day, because that's the best way to um, display dates and sort them and order them and, and that sort of stuff. So we've got that, then we've got 70 and checking, let's see. I'm going to add a couple more in here, just separated by a couple of days. And we can add some different pieces of data there. One of them is going to a savings account, the others are going to checking. And now we've got our test data here ready for us to work on the new endpoint and the new HTML file. So let's create another endpoint here. I'm going to call it slash transactions. And then it's going to be inside a form like show transactions. Just make sure to not call the function the same name as your list, since that would obviously cause an error when you try to append to a function later on. So all this is going to do is return render template of transactions.html. This is an HTML form that doesn't exist yet, but we're going to create it just now. So let's do that. And then all we have to do is in this HTML form, we have to put our transaction data. But we spoke earlier about how the HTML code runs on the browser. So all our Python code is doing is it's sending that HTML to the browser and the browser is running it. And remember the browser code and the Flask code run at completely different times. So the browser cannot access this Python list. So how are we going to put the Python list in the HTML code? Well, that is where render template really comes into play. 
what we're going to do is we're going to take this HTML file and before we send it to the browser, we're going to change it and we're going to add to it some HTML code and that HTML code is going to contain the transaction data. By doing that, we're going to make sure the HTML file contains all the information we want before sending it to the browser. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's code up the non-dynamic parts of this file. So that is the, you know, the boilerplate, the title, which is going to be transactions. And we're going to add a link to the, um, to the CSS file. So that's static style CSS like that. We're also going to add an H1 tag for transactions, just like that. Now, after this, we're going to be adding our dynamic parts of the code. And we need to find a way to get Python to put this data into the HTML in a relatively easy way. A way, which is not, <laughs> not the best way, would be to, you know, use Python's OS module and file open, open the HTML file, change its contents, and then save it, and then send the file to the browser. So we could do that but it would be extremely tedious and pretty tricky to do well. And so we're going to use something else, which is called Jinja, which is another language. It's a templating language that we can use to interpolate variables and data into files. And so Flask comes with Jinja, so we don't have anything to install. We're just going to use that to write our data into the HTML file very easily. So before we do that, let me just run this file here. We want to double check that we've got everything working. As you can see, there's an error here. And that's because we're running this append here. And but when I load this page, obviously, I didn't submit the form. And so we get an error because we're trying to access form data that doesn't exist. So all we have to do here is make sure that we only try to append to the transactions list if request.method is equal to post. Okay. If it's equal to post, then we have submitted the form because that's the only way to arrive at this endpoint using a post request. So that's when we append there. But we're going to leave it as is outside the if statement for the rendering. So let's run that again. It's okay to make some mistakes. Everybody makes them. I've already re-recorded this video a bunch of times because I made other mistakes. So don't worry about it. If you make any mistakes, just try to find out what the problem is and solve it. So there we go. We've got our data in here. Now we're going to access slash transactions and see what comes up. So there we have it. We've got our H1, which is this title here. And clearly we've loaded the CSS file because this font is the same font as we were using here. So some things are sticking between pages, which is good. Now let's move on to the next bit, which is making the page dynamic. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into transactions.html. And by the way, at this point, I'm going to close this sidebar because we don't really need it anymore. And it's just taken up a bit of space. So here in transactions.html, I'm going to add the double curly brace. This is the Jinja. Uh, actually, I'm going to call this entries. This is the Jinja2 code for interpolate some variable into the HTML. So what it's going to do, it's going to grab the entries variable, whatever that contains, and it's going to turn it into a string, and it's going to place it inside the HTML code. So what is the value of entries? Well, that is the next part of render template. Here we can say entries is equal to, and we can tell it what entries in the HTML code should be equal to. And here entries is going to be equal to our transactions variable. Okay, so let me restart this. And now when we restart this, you can see that we get a list printed out in there. Obviously not the nicest way to display our transactions, but you can see that our interpolation is working. So clearly the render template function is running Jinja on the HTML file. And that comes with Flask. And it's one of the really interesting bits about Flask that is so tightly integrated with the Jinja templating language. In fact, the creator of Flask is the same guy as made Jinja. So that's why they work so well together. So this is really awesome, but it's not quite what we wanted. Fortunately, Jinja doesn't only interpolate values into a string. Here, the HTML file is our string. And this syntax here with a double curly brace is the interpolation syntax. Jinja can do more than just that. It can also do things like for loops, for example. So here I'm going to use a slightly different syntax in Jinja too, which is the curly brace percent symbol. And in here we can put statements. So we're going to do for entry in entries. 
and this is going to look fairly similar to Python code, but not quite the same. Then we have to put an N4 at the end. So here we've got the body of the loop inside these two things. And here we can interpolate, for example, entry. Notice that I've got an HTML formatter that is changing the layout of this a little bit. It's not great. I should probably get rid of it for, for these files, but that's all right. So what we're doing here is we are looping over, essentially, let me just bring it back here, looping over the entries list. And for each element of that, that we're calling entry, we're going to print it out. Okay. So when I save, this is going to go back to this weird uh, format. But again, don't worry about that. Let me just run this. And now we can refresh the page. And you can see that we got rid of the list. All we're doing now is we are printing out or adding into the HTML document three separate strings, one for each tuple. Now, because this is HTML and it doesn't care about new lines and space and things like that, these are still all appearing in one line, but we can change that. Before changing that, though, I'm going to bring back my um, my file explorer here. I'm just going to rename this so that instead of .html, it's .jinja2. That is going to make the Jinja2 code look a bit nicer. It's going to get rid of the reformatting, which is very annoying. And we have to go to app.py and change this to .jinja2 as well. So by doing this, this is totally fine. Again, all that render template is doing is it's grabbing the string contained inside this file, which is transactions.jinja2, and it is running the Jinja language on it, which allows us to execute this code and interpolate our values into it. And then it is sending it to the browser as if it were HTML code. So it doesn't matter what type of file this is. This could be .txt or it could be anything else you want. Okay. So now that we've got this, we want to print out these transactions in a slightly nicer way. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put them inside paragraph tags. So we'll do inside a paragraph, we can do entry two, for example, and I'll just add the spaces here to make it look a bit nicer. And that entry two is the account. So we'll say, for example, checking colon, and then we'll say entry one for the amount on entry zero for the date. So now let's restart the app. And you'll see that we get three separate paragraphs printed out here. If we wanted to make this even better, we could put all of this inside an ordered list for the different transactions. So notice here that I'm putting an OL element outside the for loop that is going to create just a plain old uh, ordered list element. And then the for loop is going to be in charge of creating the individual bullet points, which in HTML is the LI element. So we're going to save that restart our app. And now you can see that we get one, two, three in there. Obviously, you could go to the CSS file and make changes to the style so that this looks completely different. You could style the dates differently or the amounts, or you could add whatever else you wanted or change the spacing, etc. But all that we've got here is a list of dynamic data. So now if we stop our app and we go into app.py and we get rid of the test data, and then we restart our app, you'll see that we get nothing printed out in the transactions list. So that's because we don't have any transactions now. Let's add one in here. So I'm going to do this. And now if we go back to the transactions, you can see that we get our transactions printed out there. At the moment, there's only one. But if we added more, more of them would show up. That's everything from me for now. In this video, we've learned how to make dynamic pages. And in just four videos of this playlist, we've learned how to make a fully dynamic website using Flask. Granted, there's a lot more to learn, but we're off to a great start. Thank you so much for watching and for joining me in this video. Hit like if you liked it and subscribe to see more when they come out. I'll see you in the next one.